Brain teasers, brain teasers, brain teasers, brain teasers. This is this is one that I definitely dislike strongly, and probably a lot of people dislike strongly. And I think it's quite a rubbish interview question, but you know, nonetheless, you'll probably get asked it. Um, I got asked it at least a, few, a couple of times during my whole process, um, and it's one where it could definitely go very wrong, and it could mess up like the rest of the interview and make you just very nervous and destroy your morale. And um, so you want to get kind of ready for it. Now I'm not going to go through. All the examples I have, um, I really urge you to check out the blog post of that. I, I just, I don't think it's like as easy for you to digest it and learn it yourself through just seeing me say it. Um, I think I'm going to give you the principles to follow here, um, and then you know, in your own time, go through the examples I provide. Look online for more examples. Um, you know, there, there aren't too many flying around like in in the investment banking world. Perhaps in asset management, or a few more kind of brain teasers. Perhaps in um, Consulting, it's going to be more geared towards market sizing, which I kind of see as more of a subset of brain teasers. I'm going to be covering market sizing in a separate component that is covered in investment banking. I was asked at least about three market sizing questions uh, throughout my interview processes, and so that does come up occasionally. Um, and so, yeah, the the general principles. The first thing is, you know, I really do think this is a quantity game of examples. You just need to go through as many examples as you can and go through the answers. Not only will that help you think logically, but it just means it's going to be more likely you're going to come up with the um, you know the actual answer in the interview. You're going to be able to answer it quickly. Uh, for example, the typical angle between two two hands on the clock. You just got to realise that 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 um, hour handle is also going to move along with the minute handle. Most people don't get that. I certainly didn't get that when I was first asked it. It's just being kind of you know meticulous going through that example knowing how to do it and, and and just as a side note okay so say so i i was asked this and you know i think i think i must have heard it before i don't think it's profitable to just like say oh you know arrogantly oh i've done this before can i have another question like what why would you do that you know they're not testing whether you've practiced well they're testing whether you can think logically and it's not just like knowing the answer it's being able to logically um, communicate that answer and convince to them that you're a logical thinker um so i i, I just really kind of take a logical approach Take it slow, humble yourself. You probably will trip up because you're under a lot of pressure. Just like be ready for that and don't let it get to you. So that's the, the kind of first example I'd go through. Um, the second one is uh, the kind of whole idea of you have a 300 milliliter cup, a 500 milliliter cup, and you want to make 400 milliliters of water and you've got unlimited water supply. And you know, just go through that example of okay, so first I'm going to uh, reef, I'm going to fill up the 300 milliliter cup, I'm going to pour that into the 500 milliliter cup. Um, I'm then going to refill the 300 milliliter cup. I'm then going to pour that into the 500 milliliter cup until it's reached to the brim. And then now I've got 100 milliliters. Um, and you know, then I'm going to empty the 500 milliliters, pour the 300 milliliters in, and you know, eventually I'm going to get to 400 milliliters, as you'll see in the blog post. Kind of going through that once, going through it another time, to make sure you don't get tripped up. Again, you're reinforcing that logical path to get into that final answer. Um, another one is okay. So this is one I actually did get in one of my assessment centres, um, and it's how many, how many. So say you have a structure of ten cubes by ten cubes by ten cubes, right? So that's like a thousand cubes. Hopefully, I haven't got that wrong. Anyway, um, so if you were to immerse that into a, 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 a kind of bucket of red paint, not leaving the top cube, um, the top layer of cubes covered in red, how many cubes are not? Okay, or how many cubes? It could be either way. How many cubes are covered in red? The way to do this is you don't start doing some complex maths about you know which cubes are overlapping, which cubes are in red. Instead, what you do is you um, calculate the number of cubes on the inner layer, so that's the eight by eight by eight layer. You subtract that from the overall 1,000 mini cubes, making this cuboid structure, um, and then you um, also subtract the fact that the top layer is not covered in red as well. And that's just the approach. Again, these are just kind of mind tricks. You just got to get used to them. Okay, so that's like a few examples. Um, the, the fun one is a bit more of a generic example, um, and it's the typical mathematical mental math calculation question. Um, and this is one that I think is probably the highest risk because people just get comfortable. Well, I get, I, I got complacent with it, and, and I, I certainly almost messed up this various times, especially in practice. I mess it up a lot because um, you just feel a bit too confident with it, um, and you think, right, I'm spending hours writing the Y firm, the commercial awareness, technical components, which I'm going to cover soon. You know, you spend hours doing that. Are you really going to get caught out on the maths question? Well, like I urge you, just like be patient, take it slow, and humble yourself. Realize that the the risk of mistake here is highest than ever. And if you get this wrong, and for example, the interviewer is feeling 
particularly mean, and they're gonna to admit to you that you got it wrong, and they're gonna say, no, we're gonna move on from it, your mind will start to wreak havoc. And it will begin to say, you know, it will begin to think, okay, so I failed this interview, what do I do now? You can't even focus on the next question. You've got like a hundred different processes like firing up in your mind, and you know, your chances of success are massively diminished. Um, so with this question, Two, two key methods. I mean, I thought there was one method, but Ben kindly pointed out there was a, there was a second method here. So just like, kind of do, do the quick shortcut. Is there a quicker method? Um, for example, 64 times 98, right? Um, here, you, maybe you saw it quickly that 64 times 100 minus 64 times two will get you to the right answer. That's a really good approach. Um, but if you don't see that, if it's a bit more difficult to kind of make that, that quick shortcut, um, just, just go through the process really logically. There's nothing special to this. But the key, and it's, it's being patient, the key is just to humble yourself and take it very slowly, breaking it down into 64 times 19. If you need to break that down even more, you break that down even more, they're not gonna mark you down. They need you to be logical and to keep calm under pressure because they want to know that you're gonna keep calm in front of a client when you have to admit a mistake. Um, so that's 64 times 19 and 64 times eight and you add it together and you take your time. You don't rush and you talk it through and you don't do complex things in your head and you add it up because you're gonna get flustered because you know they're watching you and they know that you know they're watching you. And it's just, it just becomes very awkward otherwise. Um, so that's the breakdown of the, the first component of brain teaser questions. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna, I've made a separate video for market sizing questions because I think they're slightly different, but I, I do think they're still in that kind of component of are you a logical thinker? Uh, can you think under pressure? And how would you communicate that? Um, to another person, potentially to a client if you are in the role. So stay tuned um, for that video too.